In this video, we'll look at how breadboards can be used to prototype or model circuits. It's easy to prototype a circuit provided you know a few basic principles. The first is how you make a connection. This is done by pushing the component into the holes on the board. But to make a circuit we need to understand what happens behind the plastic exterior. Along the bottom we have the power lines, and along the top we have connected rows of pins. Let's take a look at the back. Here we can clearly see how the power rails are connected horizontally, whereas the component rails are connected vertically with a gap in the middle. It's common to connect integrated circuits across this gap. Normally you never see these metal rails, but taking it apart gives us a good idea how it works. If we remove a rail, we can see in this close-up just how the components slot into place in the rails. So remember, power rails run horizontally and component rails run vertically. This means that components connected next to each other horizontally aren't connected electrically. One of the first things to do when creating a breadboard prototype circuit is connect a power supply. To do this, put the black or negative lead in the black side and the red or positive lead in the positive side. Sometimes it's helpful to connect a switch into this arrangement too. For our first simple circuit, we'll connect an LED. Remember to connect the short leg to the negative side of the board. Quite often when breadboarding, it's necessary to bend the legs so that they fit exactly across the holes. Doing this makes for a much neater breadboard. Now we need to connect the LED to the positive side of the board. We'll do this through a resistor, and a piece of wire known as a jumper lead. As we've connected in one vertical line, all parts are electrically connected. Here we have a battery pack, which is made up of four AA cells making six volts. When we connect this up, we can see that the LED lights. Let's try something a little more complicated. We'll add a switch. We've removed the resistor and put a switch in its place. The switch contacts are on the diagonal one contact is in line with the LED, the other two rows to the left. As there's no electrical connection between horizontal rows in the component section of the breadboard, we need to change the position of the jumper and the resistor to connect to the power supply. These are all in one straight vertical line, so there is an electrical connection. If we follow the electrical connection through from the negative side, we go up in a straight line, across two rows, thus breaking the connection, and then up in another straight line to the red side. When the switch is pressed, it joins the connection between the two rows and lights the LED. There's many different kinds of breadboards, some are more complicated than others as shown here. But the principle's always the same. Power rails run horizontally, and component rails, usually with a break in the middle, run vertically. The best way to learn is to experiment 